Hello again, guys. Dirk the Red Panda here with episode three of Tennis Ace. Um, we are basically still in day one, just exiting the gymnasium right now. We are not near the end of this day, right at this moment. Like I said, it's probably gonna be like an hour and a half long episode. But yeah, like this is gonna be it for day one, and then we'll be moving on to the next few days. One thing that I kind of noticed from the previous episodes and watching other people kind of like, you know, play through it and like, you know, pronounce names and stuff was that I was pronouncing Keisuke's name wrong. I kept saying Kaisuke, thinking like, you know, K-A-I, Kai, knowing people like that in real life. So from now on, it's going to be Keisuke. And to stop me from just rambling on any longer, we're going to get straight into this episode. Once I step out of the training building, the warm, orange-colored sun rays touch upon my skin. Ah, it feels really good. The orange-tinted sky looks so gentle and mild. Today is really a beautiful day. Ah, there you are! Huh? I hear a nearby voice and reflexively turn around. Standing before me are three of my classmates. Jin? Gin? Rep? Fox smiles at me. Her smile is warm and kind, almost the same as this afternoon's sun. She makes me feel at ease. What a coincidence, Nikokun. I was just looking for you. For me? What could you possibly need from me? Wait. It's not bad news, is it? She softly giggles, crossing her arms. That's right, her name is Ayako Kintsungawa. She is our class president this year once again. She might seem like the calm and collected type, but she's very much a bona fide sadist. But those personality quirks aside, she's usually a very caring and responsible person. Most of us have been in her care since our freshman year. To be honest, there have been very few changes to our class since we joined this school. Other than Shuichi being bumped up to the advanced class, that is. I'm sure, but I might just be the bearer of bad news. I've been sent here on official business. I should have guessed. You never come to me when it's good news. Well, now that's a bit unfair, isn't it? Despite dreading whatever news she might be about to give, her laugh certainly makes me feel less anxious. But... Not to be a negative Nancy, but if you're here on official business, then... What are these two doing here? What, these two? And after we went through all of this trouble to track you down, we had club work to attend to, you know? <sighs> Jin sure is rowdy, even this late in the afternoon. Don't mind him, Nikokun. We were actually heading home early when we bumped into Ayako-chan. She asked us to keep watch of the exit to the men's locker room while she went in through the other side. Nissan, don't blab on me to him. Also, since when do you call her Chen? Ah, that makes sense. Since this used to be an all-boys academy up until a few years ago, now all the buildings have been retrofitted to accommodate female locker rooms. Originally, the tennis volleyball courts actually had the two lockers on separate ends of the building to separate the different clubs. But now the guys and girls of both clubs share lockers instead, and doors were built into the locker room so they could both access the courts. Ah, I see. 
So you were going to work as a glorified doorman while the rep went in through the girls' locker room to look for me, huh? What? N no, it's not like that. Well, doesn't he like to sound important? Class rep giggles again. She hasn't said anything and just settled into watching these two bicker. Did she bring them along in the hopes that she'd get to see this very same situation unfold? Ah, <sighs> she really is a sadist. By the way, these two guys in front of me might not look like it, but they're actually twin brothers. The larger one, Ginichiro Nezumiro, is the eldest of the two. He's much more mellow and easy to deal with than his brother. But despite this all, he can be really intense when it comes to food. The other, Jinichiro Nezumiro, is definitely one of the rowdiest people I've ever met. He is slow, dim, and has a short fuse. But despite these shortcomings, the two of them are genuinely nice people and I definitely enjoy spending time with them every now and then. So, class rep. What exactly did you come here to tell me? Ah, that's right. Sorry, I was having so much fun with this atmosphere that I forgot. I'm sure you were purposefully staying out of it so you could watch them bicker for a while longer. To be honest, Katsuragi-sensei asked me to come fetch you. She didn't tell me exactly what's going on, but it was something about today's morning assembly. Uh. Oh yeah, that's right. You skipped today again. I imagine she was probably pissed. I don't think she would have minded it so much if you actually bothered to show up to any of the meetings organized over the school year. Well, I can't help it. They're all so boring. <laughs> that definitely sounds like something you would say. Well, you shouldn't worry so much. I've done my best to smooth things over with her, so she's only a little annoyed now. Wow, really? That's so nice of you, class rep. Hey, it really is. How come you never try to smooth things over for me when I'm the one getting in trouble? Once you become an important asset to this school's reputation like Nikokun, then I just might. Ah, don't say that, Ayako-chan. It's not Chan. Please refer to me as Kintsungawa-san, or Class Rep. You're kidding. I don't even get to call you by your first name? Even though her words might sound harsh, she has a wide grin on her face. No doubt about it, she's only doing it to tease Jin. And he's so dumb that he's falling for it. Um, Jin? Maybe we should head home already. I guess so. I've got a mountain of homework to do. Oh my, a mountain? I don't remember being assigned any homework today. Well, that's... That's because he slacked off last year and didn't actually finish all the credits he needed to pass. So he's having to deal with them now. Oh my, <laughs> I'm surprised the school even allowed him to do that. Ah, Nissan! You didn't have to tell her that much! <laughs> These two sure are full of energy every day. I didn't even realize how much I missed their attitude during spring break. How can I put it? Seeing them like this is kinda... Refreshing? I'm not all that surprised that he was given an extension, though. Our school is pretty lax when it comes to people in the athletic programs. We got tons of exposure from them after all. We have some of the best teams in the country in multiple sports. 
Well, this was a fun little chat, but I guess I really should get going to the staff room. Sensei's mood is probably just gonna get worse if I make her wait. Ah, uh, that's probably a wise decision. Yeah, dude. It was an honor meeting you. Don't just write me off like that. Hey, Nikokun. How about we grab a bite to eat together again one of these days? Ah, sure. Show me to another nice restaurant and I'll take you up on that offer. Okay. It's a deal. Nissan, how come you're so buddy buddy with Nico Kun? I'm kinda jealous. I'd rather avoid this unpleasant encounter, but given that class rep was the one tasked with giving me the message, I'm sure there's no way I could go home without her reporting the fact that she managed to pass it along. In other words, I'm dead anyway. Might as well go peacefully. I walk into the main building. By the way, other than the multiple minor buildings for the different athletic departments, our school is divided into three main buildings. There's the main building which, among others, houses the staff room and the other club rooms for the most high-profile clubs, or the ones with the most expensive equipment. Then there's the classroom building. It's a much smaller building with only three floors, one for each of the grades. Over here is our school. Each grade is divided from A to E, so we have 15 classrooms in total, five for each floor. The senior year is a little different in that the A class is specifically for advanced studies. It's where they house the most promising students and pass them along classes designed to prepare for college entrance exams and college life in general. Of course, joining 3A isn't mandatory and there are always a few students that decline it. Class rep was also offered a spot with them, but she refused. Said something about wanting to see her duties as class representative to the end. Oh, and the third building is the club building. It's where most of the other club rooms are located. Our school is pretty well known in the country and we have lots of people applying every year. Just getting in is quite difficult. Well, it goes without saying that I had no issues with our entrance exam. Some of the students in here might look like a bunch of good-for-nothings, but everyone needs to have some measure of intelligence to get in. Although, I still have my doubts when it comes to Jin. Right ahead of me, walking over to the entrance, are two other classmates of mine. Ah, Kyoko-san, Yuji, what are you two doing here? And wait, why are you two together? The girl, Kyoko Nekonishi, fires a threatening glare at me. Despite her looks, she can be quite threatening when she wants to. But of course, I'm close friends with Saya, so something at this level couldn't even faze me. Excuse me, could you please not assume something so ridiculous? We just happen to be leaving at the same time. The other guy, Ryuji Kumugawa, doesn't even look like he's acknowledged us at all. Even though he did stop walking when I called out to them. Ry Ryuji? Is he ignoring me? Ryuji furrows his brow, staring even more intently at the gaming console in his hands. 
At this time, Ryuji is a video game maniac, so he always seems to have a console in his hands. I swear, sometimes I could look his way during class and he'll have a console hidden behind his textbook as if he really thought such a thing could fool anyone. But despite that, he still gets consistently high grades, so the teachers never really complain about his attitude. Heading home. Ah, he spoke. Is he just feeling a bit shy? It's true that he doesn't tend to participate in conversation unless it's about video games. Were you two visiting your club rooms or something? Kyoko nods, a haughty smile on her face. She's always so prim and proper, but she tends to act all ladylike most of the time. Well, despite her distant attitude, she's not a bad person at heart. I've been made responsible for the fashion club this year, so I was just turning in all the required paperwork at the staff room. Ryuji nods along too. Dealing with paperwork for the Game Dev Club. Wait, Game Dev Club? We have one of those at school? Just as those words leave my mouth, Ryuji glares at me. Unlike Kyoko, having a six foot tall brown bear glaring daggers at you is a really frightening thing and I can't help but feel a chill running down my spine. Sorry, sorry. I swear I wasn't making fun of it or anything. <laughs> that seems to appease him as his gaze softens up, looking back down at his game. Jeez, it's really not safe to walk around staring at a piece of hardware all the time, you know? What about you, Nico-san? Do you also have paperwork to deal with? Oh wait, that wouldn't be right. I thought Saya-chan was the one in charge of the tennis club this year. Yeah, Saya-chan's heading the tennis club. I've been made vice captain, but really, I'm just along for the ride because she made me do it. Fufu, that really does sound like Saya-chan. Despite their completely opposite personalities, I've heard that Saya and Kyoko have become really good friends since we met three years ago. Although Kyoko still spends most of her time around class rep. They've known each other since childhood, after all. Well, if it's not paperwork, then what are you doing here? There are no club meetings for us regular folk right now on the first day of class. And your club doesn't even have a room here in the first place. Ah, uh, well... Katsuragi-sensei sort of asked me to go meet her. Kyoko's expression immediately goes dark. Wow, what did you do to piss her off this time? Why do you assume that I did something wrong? This is you we're talking about. You just have that quality that pisses off most teachers. Hey! I think so too. Yuji nods, his eyes still on his game console. Don't just casually agree with her on that! Kyoko laughs. Even when she's casually goofing around, her mannerisms are incredibly refined. Well, she is the daughter of a pretty wealthy family. In fact, they actually own this school. Well, make sure to tell me the story behind it later. I'd love to hear what kind of punishment the old hag has cooked up this time. See you tomorrow. Don't say cruel things so cat- Oh, she's gone. She's really good at slipping away unnoticed. Is it a cat thing? Ah, 
Ryuji is still here though. Hey Ryuji, what game are you playing right now? Moonfighter Rangers. Ah, that one game based on that children's anime? How many seasons does that thing even have? I think I remember it airing when I was eight. Ryuji nods casually, not bothering to confirm or deny what I just said. As always, making conversation with him can be hard. Is the game fun? He looks up at me with a conflicted expression. Hey, what's with that look? Shouldn't you be heading to see that teacher? Gah, he caught onto the fact that I was trying to stall. Yeah, yeah. You can be surprisingly perceptive at times, Ryuji. Unnecessarily so. Ryuji nods, pulling a piece of toast from his bag and munching on it. Wait, a piece of toast from... his bag? The hygiene implications of what I just witnessed scare me a bit. See you tomorrow. Yeah. See ya. Off he goes. I'm jealous. I wish I could just walk away like that. I've walked all the way to the third floor, where the staff room is located. I don't want to go in! But I know that if I don't show up soon, she'll only get angrier. Better to get this over with. Kind of like ripping off a band-aid. Even though ripping off band-aids is incredibly painful to me because they always wind up ripping a ton of fur off too. Alright, I won't get anything done if I just stand around. Take a deep breath and... The sound of my knock echoes through the empty hallway. Ah, my heart is beating really fast right now. Even though I've been skipping these things since my first day of class, this is the first time I've been called in because of it. I kind of just assumed I'd keep getting special treatment because of my status as a tennis player. Come in. Pardon the intrusion. It doesn't take much time looking around to find Katsuragi sensei. She is sitting on her chair, legs crossed, and turned all the way to look at the door. She has her head leaning against her closed fist, and she looks incredibly intimidating for a regular old woman. Mishimaya. I was wondering how long it would take you to show up. Just from the tone of her voice, I can already tell that the situation is mostly hopeless. No, I'll still try to act dumb. Maybe that will save me. I wish. Mishimaya-kun, you know why it is that I've called you over, right? Well... To be perfectly honest, it's not as if I don't particularly know what kind of reason would lead you to decide against not calling me here. You're talking in circles to try and confuse me now. That's cute, but it certainly isn't going to work. Sit. Yes, ma'am. Thoroughly defeated. We certainly appreciate the amount of exposure your name gives this school. And it's not as if you're go doing badly with your studies, either, given that you're always placing quite high in the school ranks. Yes, see, I'm doing pretty well, so... Let me finish! Yes, ma'am. Katsuragi sensei sighs, picking up a folder that was on top of her desk and opening it up. Is that a file on me? 
I could see here that your academic records continue to worsen with each passing year. All of your teachers keep mentioning a continuing lack of interest on your part. Not only that, if I pull up your records from grade school and junior high, the drop is almost immediately apparent. Well, one can't live solely on past accomplishments, right? If that was the only reason for this drop, then I'd certainly let you off the hook. But we both know that that's not the real reason, so may we just cut to the chase? Scary. She's really scary. Katsuragi-sensei used to be our homeroom teacher up until last year, but she recently got a promotion and became the head teacher and coordinator for the school. So she doesn't have any classes to deal with this year, and instead oversees the progress for all the classes in school. It's an unenviable position. Just thinking about the amount of work she must have is already giving me a headache. If only you were trying hard, then I could forgive you for this. It's not as if a person can continue to excel for their entire life. Drops in productivity are to be expected. But you've completely stopped trying, haven't you? I've also spoken to your coach and he's told me that you've completely stagnated when it comes to tennis as well. What would he know about it? It's not like he even bothers coming to pra- I wasn't done talking. Yes, ma'am. Coach Mikado theorized that you've been going through a rough period caused by extreme stress due to all the expectations placed on you for the past six years. If that is the case, I'd very much like for you to see our school's psychiatrist and... With all due respect, but would that be obligatory? Well, no, we cannot force a student to see a psychiatrist unless he's deemed to be in the direct need of psychological assistance. Then I'll pass. I'm fine on my own, thank you very much. I don't have any complicated problems like that. I'm just not interested in paying attention to class, that's all. She sighs again, rubbing the bridge of her nose with a furrowed brow. So you prefer taking full responsibility for your failures over letting someone help you deal with your situation? Given your talents, I imagined you'd want to become a professional. That's... Huh? I can't bring myself to confidently say that's my plan. I'll let you off the hook this time. Huh? Why? I did just say that I've been doing all this on purpose, haven't I? Call it intuition if you will, but I don't believe punishing you for your lack of motivation will somehow help you to become more motivated. I stand up from my chair with a half jump, suppressing the urge to grab her in a tight hug. Thank you, Katsuragi-sensei. You really are much nicer than I give you credit for. Of course we have yet to discuss your punishment for skipping on this morning's assembly. G the old fox smiles, looking up at me with a devious look. What, you didn't really think I'd also give you a pass for willingly and with full knowledge of your actions? Skipping the assembly to welcome our newest students for the third time in a row, did you? Of course not. The thought never even crossed my mind. <laughs> I'm doomed. I end up being forced to be on cleaning duty for the next week as punishment for my actions. Considering everything I've done, I suppose I had it coming, but... 
I really wish I had managed to go home free. Huh? What's this? Now that I think about it, I think I can hear... something? It sounds like music, come to think of it. There's a music room nearby, isn't there? But I thought the only music club still operating in our school was the Light Music Club. This sounds more like classical piano. Not that I know anything about music in the first place. It's just a feeling that I have. Is someone using it at this hour? It's almost 6 p.m. I guess I'm a little curious about it. Whoever it is, this person plays really well. Maybe this is a recording. No, but it's not coming from any of the school speakers. And the audio quality is too high. It really sounds like the real deal. Maybe I could go take a look? It certainly wouldn't hurt to take a peek. Before I even consciously make a choice, I feel as if my legs are working on their own, dragging me towards the origin of this music. It's as if the piano is calling out to me. I want to listen from up close. No, I need to listen from up close. But who could be playing this? The classical music club has been disbanded a few years ago. All that's left is an old room with some dusty instruments. Maybe it's a teacher or a freshman? No, wait. Club activities haven't started yet, so there's no way they'd allow a freshman to be using the club room already. Before I notice it, I'm already at the door. That was really close. I nearly walked in without thinking. How would that person even react to it? What would I even say? Sorry I barged into the room, but could you keep playing the piano for me? But then again, this does sound really good. Crap, I'm just going around in circles with this logic. Screw it, I'll just sneak in. The piano is so loud they might not even notice it in the first place. I slide the door open as gently as I can. I peek curiously into the room, looking around for the source of the music. And that's when I see him. A boy is sitting in front of the piano, his figure is bathed by the orange rays of the sun that are coming in from the nearby window. He rocks his body back and forth to the sound of the music, looking incredibly happy at the same time. The tiger rocks his body back and forth in time with the music. Wait, are his eyes closed? I thought that sort of thing only happened in movies. Droplets of sweat are dripping down from his face, but his expression doesn't falter for even a second. Damn, this guy is intense. The color of his fur is an intense orange. One that becomes almost blinding when touched by the sun's gentle rays. I can feel the music slowly enveloping me. Almost as if it were really calling for me. It's telling me to come closer. I can't take my eyes off of his performance. I can feel his music echoing deep inside of me. I don't even know what I'm doing, but... I know I want to feel more of it. I feel a tightness in my chest as if I might suffocate, and yet, it's not unpleasant at all. It's like countless waves are crashing against my body. Everything else is blurry, muddled. The boy and his piano are the only thing in focus. 
they're the only thing that feels real right now. The closer I get, the harder it is to keep my thoughts in order. I can't even notice whether my legs are moving or not, but it's still a fact that I'm approaching him. Nothing else feels important right now, so I ignore everything else and just focus on his piano. The piano. Then, as if the spell was broken, I'm jolted back to reality by the pain shooting up my leg. It seems that, in my days, I need one of the tables by accident. It freaking hurts. Son of a... Oh wait, the piano stopped. I looked back to the piano and... The tiger is holding onto the piano trying to keep himself from falling from his chair? Wait, he fell backwards from his chair? Are you alright? Before I can run over to him, the boy manages to get himself back on the chair, proceeding to get up and turn to me. Yeah, I'm fine. The boy looks away from me, his whole face turning red. His tail lashes nervously behind him, like a cornered, frightened cat. God, I really did a number on him, huh? Sorry about that, I didn't mean to scare you. I just, um... The boy relaxes, if only slightly. He crosses his arms and sits upright on the chair. Sorry, I didn't know there were still other students around. Hmm? Um, can I help you with something? Oh, no, no, no. Sorry for staring. I don't think I've ever seen him before. And I know for a fact that most freshmen wouldn't be in this building today unless they had some business in the staff room. Did he just wander in here and got into this club room? No, but it would be kept locked in the first place. There's no way he would have been able to get in. He also doesn't really strike me as a freshman. He doesn't have that innocent, hopeful start that you would see in the eyes of most freshmen. Hmm... I'm sorry to ask so suddenly, but are you a freshman here? Because you certainly don't look like it. The boy blinks a few times, cocking his head to the side. Then, as he looks down at his own uniform, he seems to understand my question. Uh, no. I mean, I'm new here, but I just transferred to this school today. I'm actually a senior. I had a few problems at home this morning, and, and I, because I got here too late, classes already started, and I had to stick around until late. We can open again, but then she produced her told me after school. I, I get it. I get it. Slow down. Uh, I'm sorry. I was talking too fast again. Again? Is this a common occurrence for him? Still, he talks so fast that I can't even keep up with what he's saying. Ah, uh, he's kind of giving me a headache. He definitely looks like the high-energy type. No, that's not even the weirdest thing. How can you say so much about yourself to someone you've only just met? Wait, is he still talking? Crap, I've been so caught up in my own thoughts that I wasn't even paying attention. Not really, and I got in this room to avoid giant cars, and I was really fine out of time though, but it took me some time to get up, it was up and running again. The boy strokes the keys of the piano, smiling gently at them. The piano seems to calm him down a bit, and I have to admit, he has a beautiful smile when he lets his guard down. Wait. 
Isn't he relaxing a bit too much? He completely forgot that I'm here. He's just falling over the piano right now. Ahem. <clears throat> oh, whoa, 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 whoa. He certainly is energetic. I give him that. Did you say you just got here after today's classes ended? Yeah, I did. Why? Well, it's just... I point towards the clock above the whiteboard. It's already 15 past 6. Eh? He looks towards the direction I am pointing slowly, almost like clockwork. I swear I can almost hear the clicking sound as his head turns. Once he sees the clock, he freezes. Huh? Ah, this guy's too much. How did he not notice time passing? The sky's completely orange for God's sake. No way, I didn't even get to my classroom yet. What am I going to do? At this point, it's clear as day that he's panicking. And I'm probably a horrible person because watching him acting this way is incredibly funny. Hmm, maybe I could do something nice for him and show him around? It's not like he's a bad guy, just a little rough around the edges. But then again, I'm not exactly fond of the idea of hanging out with someone I don't know. Well, I suppose I'm free right now. I could show you around some of the most important areas if you'd like. I do feel bad for scaring him like that when I came in. Poor guy almost had a heart attack. I remember Shuichi telling me a while ago that I'm always too unfriendly to new people, so I try my best to sound warm and kind. <sighs> it feels refreshing somehow. It's been a while since I've legitimately tried to be friendly to someone new. Really? Really? His eyes go so wide that I barely even make out the color of his iris now. This guy has such drastic shifts in emotion that it's starting to give me whiplash. Sure. We'd have to be quick, though. They'll close things up in about an hour. Could you just tell me what classroom you were assigned to? Um... It was classroom 3B. 3B? Then that means... Oh, it's the same as me. He smiles from ear to ear, his eyes nearly twinkling with excitement. Really? That makes everything a lot easier. Oh, by the way, my dad told me something about this school having special classes for seniors. Can you tell me what that is about? Special classes? You mean college prep? If so, then it's just a specific class where they give students some extra classes to prepare them for entrance exams. So the best students get special treatment? Isn't that kind of unfair? Not really. You're allowed to move up to that class until the last month of class, so really, anyone can join it as long as they work hard enough. That's not true. I mean, even if I studied 25 hours a day, I'd still never place in the top 50. What? How much do you usually score on your tests? I've never had more than 50 in any tests I've ever taken. What? Is this for real? You need an 80 point average to graduate, you know. Huh? He freezes yet again. Even his tail is completely frozen mid-motion. 
how is he doing that? Huh? And there he goes again. No way, no way, no way. What am I going to do now? No one told me this when I applied to this school. How did you even pass the transfer exam anyway? I heard it's harder than our midterms. I... I didn't have to take one. They took me in for the music program. In other words, kind of like a scholarship? Well, I suppose if they allowed you in without testing you, they might just lower the passing score for you. At least I hope they do. This guy is seriously hopeless if they don't. Uh... Is that so? Phew, you really had me worried just now. Completely back to normal already? Anyway, I'm Jun. Jun Kobayashi. Pleased to meet you. I hesitate for a second when he extends his hand towards me. This guy is completely throwing me off my pace. As soon as I grab his hand, he starts shaking my hand excitedly. Actually, maybe too much excitement. Way too much excitement. Alright, alright. That's enough for now, okay? He looks completely clueless as I pull my hand away from his death grip. Jeez, this guy isn't normal by any definition of the word. I'm Nico Mishimaya. It's nice to meet you too. Nico Mishimaya, huh? It's a wonderful name. I really like it. Oh, um, well, thank you, I guess. Yeah, thank you. Anyway, if you don't mind, we should probably get going already. It's starting to get late. Oh, right, I forgot. He dives behind the piano and picks up his bag. There are books and papers falling off of it. This guy really looks like the messy type. Nothing out of the ordinary with the bag itself, though. The owner apparently makes up for the bag's plainness. Shall we? We leave the music room and I start showing him around the school. Wow, this school's really big. We haven't even seen everything and my legs are already trembling from all the walking. I think that's more with you being out of shape and less to do with the school's size. Though I should probably hold off on saying something that tactless. Hey Mishimaya-san, what about the other side of the locker room? The other side. Ah, he's looking at the door to the volleyball courts. Wait, should I even let him go there in the first place? When I took him to the tennis court, he just kept walking around like a kid in an amusement park, shouting things like, So this is what a tennis court looks like, and it's so amazing. He even took a few pictures. God knows what those are about. That's for the volleyball courts. I don't think I'm allowed to take you there, though. I'm not a member of that club. What about the tennis courts? Uh, do, you, do you have permission to take me there? I think the big tennis bag I'm carrying with me should have been enough to tell him that I'm a member. But this guy is apparently very dense. Um, well, I'm a member. Shouldn't the clothes in the big tennis bag I'm carrying around have tipped off to that? Wow, really? I've never really watched a match live, but it totally looks like an awesome sport. I don't know any of the rules, though. God, 
too much. This guy is too much. He has way too much gas in his tank. I don't know how to deal with people like that. Nico? Just as I hear a voice calling out to me, Shuichi's head peeks out from behind a couple of lockers. As soon as he notices me, he smiles and walks up to us. He's completely covered in sweat. His clothes look like they've been submerged in water. What are you doing here? I thought you had left already. He finally notices Kobayashi, who seems to have tried to hide behind me. Who's this? A new club member? Kobayashi's entire body goes stiff as he steps out from behind me. All of his motions have suddenly turned mechanic. I I'm Jun Kobayashi. I it's a pleasure to meet you. For some reason, he seems even more nervous around Shuichi than he was with me. Shuichi studies him for a few seconds, looking incredibly interested in him. Kobayashi? Huh. If I'm not mistaken, you're the student I was asked to accompany today. Me? Kobayashi looks to be in shock, taking a step back and nearly choking on his own words. To be honest, even I'm a little bit surprised. Shuichi was asked to meet a new student? What for? You know about me? Yeah, one of the teachers was supposed to show you around school today, but she called in sick. Since I'm the student council president, I was asked to do it in her steed, but... You never did show up. Almost as if he were stabbed by an invisible arrow, Kobayashi's entire body shivers at Shuichi's merciless words. And here I waited for almost an hour, losing my first class of the day because you didn't show up. Another invisible arrow. You know, I really wish people would call beforehand if they happen to be late for something. It's not like everyone has infinite free time like some people, right? Yeah. Kobayashi slumps his shoulder in defeat, mumbling a few incoherent apologies. The fact that Shuichi could say all of that with a smile on his face, though. Scary. Shuichi, you're scary. Well, he says he got here a bit late and the gates were already closed. So it's not entirely his fault, right, Kobayashi-kun? Kobayashi nods. Uh, yes. I'm sorry I was so late. I had been living in a different town until recently and ended up getting lost. I'm so sorry I've inconvenienced you. In what is certainly an uncharacteristic moment for him, Shuichi examines Kobayashi as if he didn't know what to make of the situation. I guess I'm not the only one who gets thrown off by the pace of this guy. Well, it's alright, I suppose. I was mostly joking anyway. It didn't look like you were! I've already been informed of your circumstances. If you want, I can give you a quick tour. Uh, no. It it's alright. Mishimaya-san already did. Shuichi looks at me, dumbstruck. Wait, Mishimaya-kun helped a stranger of his own free will? Don't look surprised about it. Yeah, I did. Got a problem with that? No, not at all. It was just really unexpected. Have you already taken him to the staff room? The staff room? Why would I have to take him there? Shuichi stares at me in surprise. 
New students have to be assigned a teacher as their counselor when they join. You should know this. We did it two years ago. Oh, now that he mentioned it, I do remember something like that. Wait, is this why I'm always having to deal with Katsuragi Sensei? I honestly didn't remember. Oh, I completely forgot. You don't have to look at me with such disappointed eyes. It's not my fault, you know. You can't expect me to remember that. It was a whole two years ago. It's no problem. I mean, if we don't get to finish everything today, he's still helped a lot. Judging from Shuichi's expression, I guess even he must be having serious problems coming up with things to say in this situation. He does tend to take his responsibilities quite seriously, so he's probably trying to figure out how much he can still do before the school closes. Well, I guess it should be fine. I'll explain to the teacher in charge of admissions that you couldn't show up today. I'm sure he'll understand. There's not much we can do since all the teachers have already gone home, so just hang tight until tomorrow, okay? Actually, Kobayashi-san, would you mind if I borrowed Mishimaya-kun? I need him to help me with something. Uh, oh, it it's fine. Though I was looking forward to seeing the volleyball courts. It's fine if you want to. I can take you to the courts. I was going to ask Mishimaya. Shuichi stumbles on his speech when saying my name. For some reason, he tends to treat everyone very formally when around other students, even his own friends. Still, it sounds pretty weird to hear my last name come out of his mouth, and I'm sure it must be even weirder for him to say it. Ah, sorry. <laughs> I'm not used to calling him by his last name. If it bothers you so much, why are you doing it? Shuichi starts rubbing the back of his neck. You're supposed to use polite speech when you're first introduced to someone, after all. Stop being so stuck up and call me by my name. You're trying too much to sound like an adult. It's creepy and annoying. Kobayashi starts laughing. Shuichi glares at me. I I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> He takes a minute to steady his breathing before he tries to resume talking. If you feel uncomfortable calling him that, then you don't need to force yourself just because I'm around. Actually, I really hate polite speech. If you prefer, you can just call me Jun. I know I'd like it better if you did. Shuichi ponders it for a second before nodding. Alright, in that case, you can just call me Shuichi. Ko- no, Junkun bows excitedly. This time, he doesn't look like a clockwork piece. Well, since that's out of the way, you can look at the volleyball courts all you want. I'm the only one around right now. I was actually hoping to get Nico to help me with my training. Shuichi looks at me expectantly. I think of backing out, but when I turn around, I see Junkun beaming with excitement. Alright, fine. But let's not take too long, okay? I was intending to go home soon. Yeah, no problem. Junkun starts strolling around, pointing and gasping at everything in sight, even a ball cart. Who gets excited over a ball cart? Shuichi makes his way to the setter position. I see a pretty big pool of sweat beneath his feet. 
How long has he been practicing? Okay, Nico. Get into position and throw me a ball. This is the drill I've already done a ton of times. Since Shuichi makes me help him with his practice constantly, I've learned quite a lot about volleyball. Also, I seem to be pretty decent at it. Well, I tend to be pretty decent at most things anyway. I throw the ball right over Shuichi's head. When it's a little above the net, he jumps, tossing the ball into the air. I start running as soon as he jumps. I make sure of the ball's position and I too jump towards it. I aim my spike just over the line. The ball hits the floor with a resounding wham right on top of the line. Nice spike! Whoa! A deafening voice assaults my ears. How can you jump so high and the sound the ball made when it hit your hand was so loud? Doesn't your hand hurt after hitting it like that? And how did you aim it so close to the line and... No, no. How about we time out for a bit? Even Shuichi is taken aback by his sudden outbursts of excitement. I've only met him today and I'm already having a hard time dealing with it. And he studies in the same class as me. This is a pretty simple thing if you train your legs. Nico might not have to jump as often as a volleyball player, but he still has very strong legs from playing tennis. As for if it hurts his hand, I guess you could say that it stings a bit, but I'm not sure I can call it painful. Aiming is just a matter of practicing a lot too. Now, mind if we continue? Please do. Shuichi hands me another ball. Gah, I can feel Kobayashi's eyes on me right now. He really is watching intently. I toss the ball to Shuichi again and we repeat the drill. It goes over his head and right when it's at the top of the net, he jumps and tosses the ball whilst in midair. Shuichi's tosses are incredibly accurate and easy to spike. He's the sort of setter that prioritizes easy to spike tosses. As such, he's very well liked by his team. He's already considered the best setter in our prefecture, maybe even in the whole country, though it'd be hard to tell for sure. Despite how good he is, the rest of his team is only average, so they've only managed to qualify for the national tournament once. He'd be really mad at me if I said it out loud though. We keep doing this drill for a while. Every now and then, Jun stops to ask questions. At first, he was only asking us things about volleyball, but... So, how long have you guys known each other? He's starting to get way too personal. Shuichi doesn't even seem phased by it in the slightest. Well... It probably doesn't take too long for a guy as sociable as Shuichi to adapt to this sort of thing. In fact, he's in a really good mood, constantly smiling and going with whatever Jun asks. Let me see. I guess it's been... about 12 years, right Nico? I guess it would be something like that, yeah. Wow, that's a long time to get to know each other. We met during our sports club's training camp. It turned out that we both went to the same club, but had never met since we played different sports. If we hadn't shared a seat in the bus back then... It looks like he is reminiscing. Come to think of it, I hadn't really paid much attention to how long we've known each other for. 
When I think about it, I barely do anything without Shuichi nowadays. When I think of it, it's almost like having a younger brother. I see what you mean, but... Why am I the younger brother? I'm older than you. You get to be the older brother when you learn to take care of yourself without inconveniencing other people. Ugh. It must be nice being so close to someone. I don't have any friends. Not since I switched schools, anyway. Shuichi smiles. Just the atmosphere around him is already helping keep the shy and jumpy new guy at a better mood. He's just so good with people that others can't help but relax around him. You shouldn't worry too much. If you want, you can just hang out with us. You're in the same class as Nico anyway, right? Of course. Thank you very much. And just like that, it seems we have adopted a stray cat. We spent almost an hour helping Shuichi practice. Hey Nico, would you mind waiting around for me? I'll just towel myself off and get changed. Sure. Well, I guess I'll get going now. It's already pretty late. Nika-san, Shuichi-san, thanks for the help. Junkun bows and takes his leave. Shuichi, you're so easy to read. You're obviously annoyed that he added the sun, aren't you? I did tell him to drop the honorifics, didn't I? You were acting very formal around him. Poor guy is probably confused. Well, I guess that's true. He's a pretty interesting boy, though. Yeah, tell me about it. A little bit too hyper for me. Really? I find it endearing. I sit down on one of those benches and wait until Shuichi is done getting dressed. It got so late while we were goofing off that it's already gotten dark. By the way, Shuichi, how did you get to stay so late in the courts? I noticed that no one came around to close it. I got the keys from the coach. I thought they didn't allow students to stay at school after class. Of course they do. All you have to do is ask nicely and sign a term of responsibility. Sorry, I'm not cut out for that sort of thing. What? Not cut out for being a normal person? Anyway, did you have fun on your first day? Meh, it's the same as every year, really. Well, I thought you'd be a little more excited after practice. You had a great practice match today, and you didn't even care about it. I wouldn't say that I didn't care, it's just... I don't even know. It didn't give me the usual thrill. Shuichi cuts in front of me forcing me to stop. When I start asking him what he's doing, he flicks me in the forehead. You've been like that for the past three years already. It needs to stop. It's not healthy. I rub at the spot he flicked me. Damn, that stung. Been like what? I don't even know what you're talking about. How dense can you be? It's obvious for me since I've been watching you play since we were kids. You have something on your mind, don't you? What is it? I don't know. If there's anything going on with me, it's certainly not intentional. You think I like making almost no progress in practice? So you've noticed your slow development. Of course I noticed. 
how dumb would I have to be in order not to? It's so frustrating. I see players that were clearly weaker than me two or three years ago suddenly beat me with ease. And that, of course, only makes me even more anxious. Shuichi scratches his head in confusion. I guess I know what you mean. Tennis is a pretty lonely sport. You've only got yourself to rely on. That's why I like volleyball. Your teammates are always there to cover for you and help you along even if you're having difficulty. The way I see it, I could be playing my best and clearly be the best player and yet still lose because my team dragged me down. It's what's been happening to you. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. What did you say? Nothing. We walk along in silence for a few minutes. I'm usually pretty bad with words. At times like this, I usually rely on Shuichi to keep the conversation going. If he goes quiet too... Sorry. Huh? What for? I know you're uncomfortable talking about this. I shouldn't have said anything. It's... fine. To be honest, Katsuragi-sensei was also saying the same thing. She says I stopped trying to excel. She's not entirely wrong either. I'll admit, I used to try a lot harder before, both in tennis and in school. I guess I just lost my drive. Wow, you shouldn't worry about it too much. Even if you're like this now, you're aware of your faults and are working to change. I'm sure things will work out. Always the optimist, huh? I try. Shuichi wraps his arms over my neck and pulls me closer, petting my head. I let him have his fun for a while. I guess I'm in a good mood. He does take the concept of skinship a little too far sometimes, though. Before I notice it, we're almost at my house. Damn, it was so pleasant that I completely zoned out. You can let go of me now. Oh, feeling self-conscious? No, I just think I've already let you have enough fun. We're even now. I think you were having way more fun than I was. I don't know what you're talking about. Huh. <sighs> Sure thing. He pulls away from me. By the way, I know I sound like a broken record, but... This is our last year of high school. It'd be a shame if we spent it freaking out about the future. Let's just take things one step at a time, okay? Sure. And I guess I should consult with a few coaches about a new training program. Oh, that sounds like a good idea. A change of routine might actually help with that psychological block of yours. Why don't you ask one of your sponsors to get you a personal coach? Nah, I don't want them to think they've got so much power over me. They already send you equipment and help pay for your travel expenses. Pretty safe to say they've got a lot of power over you, and they know it. Oh, shut up. Shuichi grins. Well, not that it matters anyway. I'm sure there are lots of professional coaches in Japan that would like to work with you. Plus, almost all the players in the country would jump at the opportunity of practicing with you. Oh, now that he mentioned it, I'm pretty sure I heard something about an exchange program. Oh, that's right. Actually, I kind of just remembered. 
but there are a few tennis clubs out of our prefecture holding an exchange program. The minimum requirement is being ranked 12 or higher on the Kanso Junior ranking. Does that mean Tanabe would be participating too? Takagi Tanabe is the current number one player in the U18 circuit. I've known him since I first played against him on the U13 Kanto tournament. We've already faced each other over 20 times and I've never beaten him. Not even once. I think so? His club is the one organizing it all. That's great then. Why don't you go? What's your ranking in Kanto right now? Three? Four? Two. And I don't know if it should be. I mean, I'm definitely getting a good amount of practice, but I'm afraid I might psych myself out if I meet him there. You're refusing the opportunity of practicing against the best player in the country? You? This is more serious than I thought. Your heart's turned to glass. Shut up. I'm not afraid of it or anything. I just... Honestly, I might actually be scared. I've avoided playing Keisuke all this time for no reason other than him reminding me of Takagi. Maybe I really do have a block. Shuichi examines me with a concerned look. Well, you don't have to worry about it too much. Whether you decide to go or not, you'll still have good practice partners over here. You can always use Urushihara as your Tanabe proxy. Kaikun's skills aren't nearly as refined as Takagi's. Ouch, poor Urushihara. Well, we're here. Sorry I can't stay for a while. I have some stuff I need to work on right away. Tell Akikun and your mom I said hi. Sure. Message me if you need anything. Of course. Shuichi waves at me without turning back and keeps walking away. It's a good thing he lives so close, but tends to get annoying when he pops in without a warning. Mom! Aki! I'm home! Hmm. Mom's shoes aren't here. Maybe she's out? I hear footsteps coming from the stairs. My little brother, Akiyoshi, walks down. Oh, Aki, you're home already, huh? What do you mean already? It's pretty late. By the way, Mom said she'd be late again, so you'll have to cook. Straight to the point, huh? Ah, you're right. I'll get right to it. Sorry you had to wait for me. It's fine. I figured you'd be staying late for practice anyway. Well, it wasn't because of practice, but if he's okay with it, I won't complain. What do you want me to cook for you? Just some rice would be fine. I don't really care. You're telling me you went to practice today, worked up a sweat, and all you want to eat is rice? You need to eat properly if you want to get stronger. <sighs> You're starting to sound like mom. Hey, I'm telling you this as an athlete to an aspiring athlete. You need to watch what you eat. What are you going to do if you go into the third set and you can't even run anymore? I'm 12. We don't play three set matches yet. You will someday. Might as well start working up your stamina right now. Alright, alright. Just make whatever you want. Time goes by pretty fast when I'm cooking and chatting with Aki. He seemed to really want to talk, seeing how I could barely get a word in. 
It was all about tennis, too. By the time I finished cooking, he was still talking like there was no tomorrow. It's hard getting him to shut up once he's started. Was I this passionate about it when I was his age? Oh wow, it's already 10.30. I told Aki I'd go to sleep just a little while after him, and he's already been gone for over an hour. Blasted video games, always distracting me. I hear the sound of the door opening. I see my mom coming in. Once she sees me, she looks surprised. Oh, Nico, you're still awake. Did you make dinner for Akiyoshi and you? Is everything okay? Everything's fine, Mom. You don't have to freak out every time you come home late. Er Aki's already gone to bed. I'm sorry, sweetie. You know I worry about you, too. Oh, and by the way, I got a call from one of your teachers today. What? He said you forgot a racket at the locker room. Honestly, you should be more careful. You know those have been custom made for you. Sorry, sorry. Phew, for a second there. I thought she had spoken to Katsuragi sensei. No, wait. There's something wrong with what she just said. That's weird. I always check my bags before leaving, and I had everything with me. I pick up my tennis bag near the door and check it over again. Yep, everything's here. Who's the teacher that called you? Hmm, I think his name was Mi... Mina... Mikado? Hold on, I know I wrote it down somewhere. Lies! Mikado Amanuma? Yes, that's it. That's our coach. He hasn't shown up for practice for the past three weeks. I think it's safe to say he doesn't have one of my rackets. He probably just wants me to run some sort of errand for him. He's still your teacher. You can't just assume he's lying. You don't know him as well as I do. Yeah, sure. I'll talk to him tomorrow then. Assuming he ever shows up. Good night, Mom. Night, sweetie. Once in my bedroom, I decide to check my phone. Oh, it looks like Sai sent me a message. Coach called mom today, said I forgot something at the lockers. Funny, he didn't even go today. I knew it. This is another one of his schemes, isn't it? Last time, he told us he was taking us to watch a professional tournament in Tokyo. Instead, he took us to the club he used to work for and forced us to work as assistant coaches for the weekend. Said it would expand our horizons if we learned how it was dealing with a player. Well, as long as Saya is dealing with him, there's no need for me to go. We finally made it. We finally made it to the end of day one of Tennis Ace. This is where I'll be ending the video, and I'm not sure exactly what my plans are for this in the future, so I'm probably just gonna maybe, like, take things a bit shorter. Maybe not. I don't know. I haven't really me measured out these days, but until next time, guys, take care.